Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Wheel Estate Show. We're your hosts, Ryan Kelly. And Eric Shaver. And today we are sitting down with Dave McAndrews, our sales manager, and we're going to talk to him a little bit about his experience in the RV industry, what he's loved about it, where the future of it is going, and what he's loved about working with us at Beaver Coach. Hopefully there's a lot to talk about there. Welcome to The Wheel Estate Show, brought to you by the Top 50 Dealer Beaver Coach Sales with your hosts, Ryan Kelly and Eric Shaver. If you're here to learn about all things RV, you're in the right place. In this podcast, we sit down with people who build, buy, and sell RVs to bring you an in-depth look at the RV lifestyle. Dave, let's jump right into it. Thank you for joining us on our show today. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate the invite. My yeah. goodness. <laughs> Why don't you share with us a little bit about your story? How did you start in the RV industry? What year was it? And uh, how old were you? And let's jump right into it. Well, gosh, I, you know, I think I go back to the 80s, guys. Nice. Uh, I know a lot of you guys weren't born, but uh, uh, I got into it with a good friend of mine that uh, talked me into running a store for him and I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> And so I thought it might be a wise idea to go into sales first. So I uh, I went in and sold uh, RVs and thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, next step was uh, they asked me to go into management. And uh, they handed me a set of keys, patted me on the back, and said, good luck, don't lose his money. So that's how <laughs> I got started with it. So it's a little different today than it was was then. But uh, and How old were you then? I was 28 years old. Wow when I uh, first took that position and that was at uh, a large dealer here in uh, Oregon. And they were at the time uh, the largest dealer in the nation. And uh, the philosophy there was uh, everybody was a number uh, customers. It was just as fast as we could sell them and, and get them out the door. And it was next, next, next. And I think that uh, that philosophy worked for a while there wasn't a lot of competition. Monaco, uh, Country Coach, uh, a few of those de manufacturers were just getting started. And uh, so there wasn't a lot of big dealer base. So we really had uh, kind of like the whole United States to ourselves. There was a few big dealers back on the East Coast. But uh, uh, the difference between here and where we're at now and the philosophy with this company is uh, absolutely totally different than, than it was Uh you know, the way we, they, we look at customers here today, uh, there's there's two. There's customers and the employees, and it's number one is customers, and number one is employees. And that's the philosophy here at this company. And the uh, good part about it is is we have taken on, uh, we are predominantly, we're a Highline Diesel uh, motor coach company. And after I got in here for a while, I started seeing that we weren't really getting the customer base until they had already purchased two or three units and we thought that it would be a good idea that uh, we start in with a towable line so we could get people into their family and uh, sell them their first rv and the good part about what happens here is all of our deliveries are done uh, in-house inside uh, red rope just like you'd see at the movie theaters you know and uh, so they've got their name on a nice plaque, and we treat the, the person that buys that $3,000 uh, trailer exactly the same as that person who buys that $750,000 motor coach. And I think that uh, people are, are amazed at the treatment they get. Uh, you know, there's we spend about on the average of $125 to $150 per uh, these gift baskets that uh, uh, a couple gals here in town uh, have... Uh, started a little business and I think that's been pretty profitable with us, but everybody gets one. And even in that person that, uh, that buys that $3,000 trailer gets a, that same, uh, same treatment. So it's, uh, it's a great concept that's going on here. Definitely. How, how have you seen over the years, how have you seen the RV industry change? Cause from the eighties to now, I mean, just the RVs alone and the, and the technology has changed a lot. How have you seen the industry change and adapt over time? Well, I think the biggest part of it is is the technology, and you know the thing about it is is the customer has demanded more from the manufacturer. You know, we when I first got into it in the in the eighties, uh, you know, backup cameras were ran off your TV set, and mm -hmm. uh, you know we didn't have the technology. You flipped a switch on, and the light came on, and that was that was the end of it. And you know, the, with the generators and stuff. But now the technology is such that uh, 
it's complex. It's very complex. And, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi hotspots and, and the, the iPads and, and things that are used to run these uh, coaches are, it's incredible what's happened. And I don't see it stopping. I think probably the, the next step uh, will be, and I'm sure it's probably in the process, uh, will be some electric, uh, all electric uh, motorhomes on the, on the smaller side. But uh, it's uh, it's it's ever changing, I and mean, it's uh, it's incredible the amount of training that our walkthrough technicians and stuff go through to uh, understand all this stuff. Because when people come in and buy it, you know, we'll spend on the average of about three to four hours per uh, unit uh, with our walkthrough technicians going through these coaches and helping them uh, familiarize with all the the uh, the workings of the coach. So it's. Uh, it's it's incredible what's going on, and all the technology that's out there in in the cars and stuff are being adapted into uh, into the RV industry, except for the uh, autonomous driving. I think that'll be a ways off on a on a motorhome, but uh, it's uh, it's the future's bright, and I think that like I say, the big thing it's going to be is uh, the electrifying of these uh, these smaller units, and I think it's closer than we really realize mm -hmm. i think so too and and even with the autonomous driving they're doing the the trucks now that'll follow each other i don't know if you've seen that it's you'll, you have like five trucks in a row and you got one guy driving and they'll all fall I, I i bet it's not too far off that we'll even see that in the big rigs yeah, yeah i believe it we got to talk to elon musk about that maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> see we <laughs> get him well, on the show <laughs> and i think probably the biggest thing is is the batteries in in yeah. what's what's changed there and that's probably that's going to be fueling the whole the whole industry with the lithium and everything that's going on so it's it'll be exciting to watch but i'll be watching probably from my uh little pontoon boat from the lake and uh, <laughs> and watching you guys grow sailing it. off into the sunset sailing that's off right. in the sunset yeah yeah well one thing that's really cool about about dave too is he's an incredible salesman but he have to marry an incredible salesman too i think oh, candy's yeah. candy's got you beat there yeah she's got me beat <laughs> so what what did that that look like how did you guys meet and how that well, story start when i was at the uh, this big dealer in junction city i was always on the lookout for we had uh, three or four other dealers there in town and i was always on the lookout for their the best uh uh, salespeople and uh, that was part of my job was to you know recruit the best I always felt that you know you should have somebody in that position that uh, was better than you are because it keeps you on your toes but anyway uh, it was a smaller dealer in uh, in Eugene and this gal I uh, heard about her at an FMCA rally uh, where one of the other salesmen from another company tried to uh, I guess uh, captivate one of her customers mm -hmm. and I heard it from a distance, and uh, so I walked in, and a friend of mine who was running the display, I said, man, who is this gal? And they said, well, this is Candy. She's our top salesperson. So normally being the guy that I am, I recruited her, and uh, <laughs> I guess uh, the rest is kind of history. It's been, uh, you know, 25 years ago, so. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I like That's that. how we met. So <clears throat> my wife understands the business, and... You know, we live up uh, in uh, we live in Washington, so I'm on a week uh, every other week. I I head back to Spokane, so she understands she understands the importance of uh, you know how I felt about the company because this just isn't another company. And it uh, you know when you look up, you wake up in the morning and you you get ready to go to work and you're looking forward to going to work. I don't call it work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, there's never a dull moment. Uh, we're, we're very serious about what we do, but we have a lot of fun. And uh, we have a lot of great employees that uh, take this uh, business very, very serious. And, uh, you know, I, I really I look at this as being more of an experience when you buy a coach from Beaver Coach. It's uh, what uh, our owners have done and what they've cultivated uh, here is probably any dealer in the country would like to, to uh, replicate it because it's, uh, it's definitely a treat when people come in to buy. Why don't you tell us your transition into Beaver Coach Sales? Because this is your second time working here, right? Yeah, I, I was with uh, 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 Ty and some of the guys uh, when they first originally got started. And then uh, I moved on to uh, uh, a family business that uh, my father had that was getting ready to wanted to retire. And I had an older brother that was in the business that didn't want anything to do with the business side of it. So uh, we had family members there. And, and if I hadn't done what I had done, he was going to shut the company down so uh, i uh, veered off of the rv industry and went into uh, uh 
uh, a different type of, uh, of business, and I ran it until they were all ready to retire, and then we uh, shut it down. and And I was about oh three months out of that, and and uh, Ty called, and uh, uh, the rest is history. I, you know, I had a great amount of respect for Ty. I didn't know what he had built here, and then when I came down, you could just you could feel, you know, that it was a place you wanted to be. And if there's just something about this building and the people that are in it that uh, uh, I couldn't I couldn't pass it up. And my wife, being as understanding as as she is, we had my daughter was still in high school and she was in marching band and and pretty uh, entrenched in everything there at school. And so instead of uh, uprooting the apple cart, I uh, uh, we decided to do what we did, and it. Uh, has its moments it's uh it definitely it's it's trying you're trying to you know when my wife did such a great job with the uh, with the kids and you know we were always there for every soccer practice and everything that went on and uh so they were at a point that uh uh you know we could do what we were doing and it was it was good so that's awesome and so you we've talked a little bit about it you might be jumping into one of these things in the near future yeah you're going think, from the business to a customer <laughs> yeah it's uh june one uh is i'm gonna retire finally and uh you know part of my job when i came here which is most sales managers wouldn't do is train somebody to take your position so uh <laughs> i've been working with uh with ryan here in the last uh two and a half years and and uh, i think the uh company is uh ready for some fresh young blood uh He's got, uh, you know, the great ability that uh, his dad instilled in him and uh, to be able to take this uh, company to the next level. And the important part about it is, is you, a lot of companies force the market and, and grow. Uh, Beaver Coach is in a, in a situation where it's been a natural, organic growth. And, uh, you know, our repeat uh, customers that have bought multiple, multiple coaches, uh, uh, we've we've kind of outgrown our space, and you know I think that there's going to be some time here in the near future where larger location will be added, uh, you know, to help spur this spur the growth. And a lot of our business is uh, repeat business and referrals, and it's uh, it's amazing the amount of people that uh, have been referred because they've had a great experience, and you know, and that's just what the owner has uh, instilled in us to uh, to carry on. So. But yeah, we're talking about uh, we we sold our home in Spokane, and we've got a little place out at the lake, uh, and that's where we're going to hang our hats for the summer and winter time. We're going to uh, we're going to venture out. So I told Ty, I said, well, I come from being an employee to probably more than likely going to be in a customer coming up soon. So. <laughs> We all know who your favorite sales guy is. Sorry, that's right. Sorry, that's sorry Ryan. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I was going to think about spreading it across for five different uh, salespeople, but I hope it wouldn't be big enough that uh, everybody would be able to retire. So. <laughs> it's going to be the biggest deal of the year. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that's awesome. So what, what are you what are you thinking about getting? Are you guys going to get something big, small? I think we're probably more like uh, going to be in a uh, either small uh, diesel or we might do the extreme with Class C because, uh, you know, the kids might uh, pop up and join us. We've got some friends that uh, in uh, Tennessee that uh, they're getting ready to retire, uh, and they want to hit the road a little bit. So we're gonna we're gonna travel around and find a winter location. So that might take us fun. a couple seasons to do it, but yeah. Uh, yeah. we got plenty of time. So that's, that's great, awesome. Dave. Yeah, That'll love to fun. hear that. So share with us because you've had so many sales guys over the years that you have you know, trained up and th that has worked for you. What do you think the kind of secret sauce is for, for sales? What separates great salespeople from average salespeople and so on and so forth? Well, I think the biggest thing is, is their character and, uh, you know, and what they believe in and, and, you know, how they, how they run their life. And, you know, when you hire a person here, uh, the process is not just one interview. We, we interview with, uh, multiple times. Uh, multiple department heads, and then what, uh, wherever they are going to be placed in the uh, in the dealership, then it gets the the other employees that are directly involved with them involved in the hiring process too, because uh, we want somebody that's going to fit in, that's got the philosophy that uh, that we have, 
uh, you know, that's uh, going to take care of the customer and, and their skills. I mean, we've got, uh, you know, our service techs, you know, you usually you can go to a store and they've got one or two good techs. We've got multiple, multiple, multiple technicians here that are experienced. I mean, we're right down from upholstery work to our paint shop to the you know, guys that are turning the wrenches. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable the amount of talent in this building that, uh, yeah. that we have. And, uh, but the salespeople is honesty and, and their character is, is one thing that I look at. Uh, that's very important uh, because we want we tell a customer we want it to be gospel and uh, we just don't answer a question just to answer a question the customer today is much more educated than than they were in the past because of the the internet and the amount of information that's available to them and uh, so and we have to stay up with that so and it's got to be somebody that's going to fit in with the rest of the guys and if the guys have a good feeling about it and gals they have a good feeling about the person, then that's they're going to be a strong candidate for a hire. And, you know, Ty and Jody's philosophy is that they want this to be the last place that uh, that you work. You know, they want you to retire here. Uh, we spend, uh, you know, in our financial statements, we, you know, we go over weekly, uh, monthly, and quarterly. And Ty is often, and Jody said, that uh, what's not up for negotiation is our employee cost. And, uh, you know, they pay they pay good money. And they're... They're the type of uh, owners that put keep their money in the business, and they're not just uh, you know they're pulling it out and and having a, a company just survive on on uh, on crumbs. Uh, they uh, they take this very serious, and uh, it's it's great to see because there's a lot of marginal dealers in the country. There's a lot of good ones too, but uh, I don't think that anybody does uh, what we do with the amount of care and the amount of money that we spend on a unit, uh, even a new unit that uh, most stuff is covered under warranty and uh, we we spend an average of twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars per unit uh, to make sure that this experience is good uh, for people so they can go out and use it you know they, I mean these things the stuff gonna break sure they are gonna break uh, but uh, you know having a dealer that's gonna back you up we've had customers that hey I can buy one in Mississippi for this amount well you know virtually have a nice trip be safe we, you know we want you to have a good time and if we can help you you know, on service, when you get back, uh, we'd be more than happy to. And nine times out of ten, anybody locally that hasn't bought from us, they have bought in someplace else, is their first stop when they uh, uh, they pick that unit up is is to here to get things straightened up. And mm -hmm. and it gives the industry a bad name. And it's uh, it's unfortunate that uh, you know money drives a lot of this. And I and I understand it. But at the same token, you're you're spending a lot of money, whether it's three thousand dollars. Or seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. You're spending a lot of money, and to not have something right that you expect to be right. Uh, there's a lot of dealers that just hand them keys and again pat them on the back and say good luck because they're never going to see them again. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. not what we do. Yeah, so. isn't that a shame? Knowing I mean, sixty plus percent of our business is out of state. Yeah. So no, dealerships that know that they're never going to see the customer again, they're selling to them from out of state. The level of service, how much lower that is than their in-state customers that they got to deal with. Our philosophy is the opposite. Let's let's treat them so well that they, they're going to yeah. make that drive past three, four, or five states to get to us to do service again. And that's a great point you you bring. Yeah, up. yeah, it's important. So, um, the moving on from from the RV industry, what would you what would you like to see change in the RV industry? What do you think? could could change and, and we could get better at as as a not only as a company but as an industry as a whole to better serve the customers well i think you know during this you know we the pandemic which we are still in uh, it has been a major disruption in uh, uh the rv industry and it's mainly been the the parts side of it getting the, the components to uh to finish things up, which has delayed, you know, a lot of people that buy these things, they're ready to go and they want to be gone the next week. And, you know, we might get a, a unit in that uh, from the manufacturer that has a defective part that uh, parts are weeks out. And uh, so I think that once they uh, get through this, it's going to take the greater part of this year and into probably next year before things get smoothened out. Uh, it's been a challenge to get our inventory a customer that orders a, a unit, uh, it's months to uh, to get it. And, and then, 
you know, when they have to start taking things offline and it sets out here, uh, out there in their yard, and then it's got to be brought back in, there's too much room for error. These aren't built like an automotive industry that, you know, everything's done, you know, computerized and, and, and runs down a line. These are built by hand, and there's just too much room for error. And I think that, you know, conditions sometimes of units coming from the manufacturer to uh, the dealer could definitely could see some improvement. You know, and I know they're struggling. It's and it's not a financial struggle. It's just they're struggling with employees. Now people are getting paid more money just to stay at home, uh, which you know, with the government getting involved in in that type of stuff. And I know there was people that needed it, but it's put a big crunch in, in employees for everybody. Restaurant industry, every I mean, everywhere you go, there's signs, you know, help wanted, and uh, it's uh, been tough. And mm-hmm. I think it's going to take a little bit to uh, to get this out, but. You know, it's uh, the trouble with what happens when you're scurrying around for that. Then, then a lot of times, you know, your R and D will suffer, and and a whole lot of things. So you'll probably see things that are going to be the same for the next year model, just because of the fact they haven't been able to get the current year model in full production. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be a uh, it'll be a challenge for a while, but you know, there's there's enough. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Totally. Now, Dave, you spend a lot of time behind the wheel of RVs going to shows and going on vacation and stuff. Do you have any kind of, uh, I know a few that come to the top of my head, stories that you've shared, but you share with us a couple <laughs> stories where you're, mm-hmm. those mohawk moments <laughs> when you stand up and your upholstery looks like a mohawk because you were scared to death. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when you, well, you know, when you're driving to shows and stuff, you know, you usually, you know, it, we were, we did a lot of the FMCA rallies and so we were all over all parts of the country and, and, and normally the manufacturer would supply all the units there and then you you would you would drive back but you know i mean some of the crazy stuff i mean you know when you're trying to get back from georgia back to back to oregon and you're driving and you're half asleep and then you stand up and the coach is still going and the guy comes in you know next to you and he takes over the driver so you don't ever have to stop i mean there's all kinds of stupid <laughs> stuff you do when you're young but oh my god yeah so. we we've never done that right nope nope, nope. No, no, the difference between cruise control and autopilot. Yeah, that's exactly right. Not officially. Right. Right. <laughs> what was that pass that you guys were going over when it was really snowy? Oh, that was, uh, well, I think we just talked about a little bit. Of, that was uh, Donner, Donner Pass. pass? Yeah. And uh, I didn't know a lot about the story as much as I did after the after the fact. But I, we was coming out of Reno and going to, to Indio and... Uh, they had the you know the marquee board up there that said you know light snow on the pass. So we thought, hey, want, you know that sounds light good. Snow. <laughs> so we dinked around in Reno for an hour or two and then took off. And by the time we got up, we were about the only uh, we were the only moving item that was on that hill. And it was snowing so hard that it was easier to go with your lights off than it was. <sighs> And it was coming down sideways, so your wipers were freezing up. I mean, it was a mess. And uh, it normally is about a two-hour drive from Reno to Bishop, just right over the other side. And we were about nine and a half hours into this thing. Oh and uh, I'm telling you, it was uh, yeah, it was nerve-wracking. I mean, it, it, thank God we had the automatic traction control on that uh, <laughs> on that uh, Monaco that we were driving going over, but. You know, I mean, it's it was insane. That's wild. <laughs> but that is wild. Everyone's got everyone's got a story of driving oh, yeah. where you go. What am oh I yeah. Doing? Oh yeah. On on the way to Moab, I, we 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 of course left way too late, and we got out, and it was one a.m. and we got twenty minutes outside of Bend, and I, I had to make some progress. We ran into snow. I couldn't believe it. So it was in the middle of it was almost April, and yeah. we're, it was snowing <laughs> snowing like crazy outside of Bend. Yeah, it's not fun to hit snow in a, in a giant RV. No. <laughs> a little stressful. No, especially when it's a matter of a couple, two or three feet deep. And Oh, my gosh. And yeah, you couldn't see nothing. I mean, everything was just like, everything was white. So you didn't know if you're in the lane, out of the lane, what. And, you, know, you and can't I, stop. You gotta fin- yeah, finally got up behind the semi-truck. And, uh, you know, so you can just barely see his taillights. So I figured, you know, if he's, you know, I, I'll be able to see him if he goes <laughs> off the cliff. Because we didn't know. And, uh, Dang. you know, you, you're just driving along and then you look down and look up and the semi's gone. It's like, okay. So now you're sitting there, you're trying to follow the tracks and. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. That's wild. It was fun. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Good times. Well, do you have any, uh, any advice for 
us young guys in the industry? Anything that you would pass on to us to uh, to keep in mind as we carry this business forward for the next 20, 30 years, hopefully? Yeah, I don't think that there's really any changes that uh, that need to be made. I mean, if uh, you keep the philosophy about the how important the customer is, uh, you know, everything else falls into place. It's you know, from service on 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 down. I mean, it's uh, everybody's got that same concept, and don't ever lose it. I mean, it's uh, it's important. Uh, people appreciate it. People love it. I mean, I mean, I don't know how many dealerships are in the country where you got customers that come in just to hang around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got people that come just to hang around, and yeah. it's just because they like the environment. Yeah. You know, I mean, you walk around in this store, and people are smiling, having fun, doing their work, and, and uh, it's. Uh, it's a great concept that uh, everybody should follow. I mean, it, right, whether it be a restaurant, anything. I mean, it's just when you hire good people that, that care about a customer and that are having, they love their job, it shows. And it's, uh, you just can't, uh, it's, it's hard. It would be hard to for somebody that has got a lot of employees to duplicate it because, I mean, unfortunately, you know, you would have to start, somewhere and you know you'd have to change your philosophy a lot of people just want to throw bodies at uh at uh you know an open position and that's not what we do here we we're better off without until that right person comes along and uh, we've had people have waited months uh that want to come to work that Mm -hmm. uh you know we just didn't have the position at the time and uh you know when we can finally fulfill their dream and that's what it is it's really it's a dream and when you come to work and you can have a good time, and and you get down to business, and you're doing everything you got you're supposed to do. It's not work. It's just not work, yeah. you know. And and retiring June one, you know, you start you start thinking about counting your days down. I'm, you know, they're going too fast for me, because I don't want it to end. I know it has to. And I, and uh, you know, I wake up in the morning thinking, am I doing the right thing? I you know, you know, I, I wind up talking to myself. Oh yeah, Dave, you're doing the right thing. You know, <laughs> you know. Then I call my wife, and you know, so it's it reassures me that i'm doing the right thing and i feel good uh about uh i guess turning the keys over to ryan uh he is uh he's got his hands in in a lot of stuff here at the dealership and and handles himself well and then on top of that being a salesperson which is a which is a full-time job uh it's gonna be i you know when i come to realize and i started listening to some of the things you know ryan was it's just the fresh ideas and yeah that you know, when you get a little older, you know, you you know, you don't start thinking too far outside of the box because you've already been outside the box and you're trying to gather yourself back up. But, uh, you know, groundwork's been laid and uh, the company's got nowhere to go but up. And I think that uh, with Ryan and, you know, the sales staff, I mean, I, you know, I'd put these guys up against anybody in the country uh, at, with as like product. I've never seen uh uh more professionalism more knowledge uh from salespeople, and i've never seen a, a group that goose off more than than they do <laughs> but That's when fair. it comes time to work it's 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 time to get to business and and then customers feel it you know everybody's yeah. customers are laughing and carrying i mean it's just you got to come experience this is what you got to do so if you're <laughs> in the market for a motorhome uh trailer fifth wheel i mean you've got to come and 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 be able to uh, enjoy the experience that a lot of people do. Shameless plug for Beaver Code Sales, but I, I love it. I yeah. love it, too. No, it's yeah, great. It's, it's and thank you for the opportunity, Dave. It's yeah. just it's been it's been great having you. You know, at the uh, at the captain's chair, we both learned a lot from you. Yep. And I can't believe we've had more fun in the last couple of years. Than oh man. It's been awesome. I just I don't think sales managers at most places go go uh, to a couple of their their sales guys. Yeah, why don't you guys do a podcast? That yeah. sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you do that yeah. in the morning and interview people? Most most sales managers just sell 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 sell. Yeah. That or our, why are you wasting so much time with that customer? You spent five hours with them. <laughs> that in our uh, our Wednesday meetings, I think that's our that's Wednesday a legacy meetings. that will that will are live. For, yeah. Well, yeah. hopefully you guys can carry on. You know, the, the owner <laughs> mm-hmm. has been gracious enough to where. Uh, uh, you know, we get our work done. Uh, yeah. We can't get it without our work being done. That's right. Uh, that uh, we uh, we take off uh, about an hour early on Wednesdays and and play a little golf. So it's mm-hmm. uh, you know a little bonding time. A little you know it takes away from you know the uh, trials and tribulations at work, even though that it is always fun. But uh, you know it's just it's just good to get out and, and uh, uh, experience. You know everybody. It's uh, 
we let our guard down. We're no longer sales managers or salespeople, and we're just <laughs> friends and having a, having a great time making yeah. fun of each other. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right down to what you wear sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're all you're all even on the golf course. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Good times. Uh, that's so fun. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Well, I think anything do you have else any, for Dave? I think I think that covers that's all it. my questions. So okay, thank you yeah. for for everything. Thank you for the time and that that we've spent together and 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 uh, for the good management and and leadership that you've had here. We appreciate it. We're gonna miss yeah. you. Yeah, it's, been a, it's been a lot of fun. I'm gonna miss it also. So most most uh, of the time we say at the end of this. Now, if you wanna if you wanna get a hold of of uh, Dave, <laughs> call him here at Beaver Coach Sales and Service. <laughs> in this case in a month from now, Dave doesn't want to hear from you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna be <laughs> he's gonna be retired. <laughs> but thank you for sharing your experience. You bet. All the, you're you're the same same age as a lot of our clients and the diesel pushers and stuff. Yeah. So it's oh, good thanks. to get your. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're much older than most of them. <laughs> so I'll fit right in. Right? You'll fit. You'll fit yeah. right in. But excited for this new chapter in your life. Yeah, good. Man. Yeah, I am too. With that, that's awesome. our interview with Dave McAndrews, our sales manager here at Beaver Coat Sales and Service. All right. Well, we have a lot of things coming up here at Beaver Coat Sales and Service. Probably one of the biggest events is our driving school coming up May 27th. If you <laughs> if you already are a confident RV driver, that's terrific. Some of these RVs, though, they're 45 feet long. Uh, your spouse might not be comfortable driving. Maybe you do all the driving. Have them join the driving school. It's really popular, but because of COVID and restrictions and all that, we're pretty limited. Uh, so if you're interested in it, sign up as, as soon as you can. So hop on our social media pages. You'll get more information and dates about that and learn how to drive these big RVs. We're gonna go out to the fairgrounds, have cones set up, go through a whole uh, checklist of what to do before you drive and talk through different situations while on the road. Oh, and if you are here in the Central Oregon area, um, like Dave was mentioning, we have an awesome culture here and we have positions open. So our service department is hiring and they're looking for people. We, we have so much business right now that we need help um, and it's a great, great, great place to work. A lot of awesome benefits of working here. So uh, contact Sean Lakin uh, if you're interested. If you're if you're in that tech world, um, maybe you're in the auto industry and want to get into the RV industry, um, any any anybody with a technical background, that would be a perfect perfect position for you. So definitely look us up. We are hiring all the time. So and fortunately, now that now that you're moving up to the new position, if you're looking for a motorhome, call me, Eric Schroeder. <laughs> <laughs> Since I will no longer be in sales. Wow. Look at the competition just well, you, went down. You, look at that. until June 1, though, buddy. Yeah, that's right. So ah, we'll see about that. Now, <laughs> May is your last month to get an actual good experience. Yeah. <laughs> Shots oh, fired. That's right. Good times. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening to our show. Thank you. We're Dave McAndrews, Eric Shaver, and Ryan Kelly with Beaver Coat Sales and Service and we look forward to seeing you down the road. Dave, you know, thank you for giving me this chance and this opportunity to come work at Beaver. Uh, I know you had a big part in that and I appreciate it and I wish you all the best in your retirement and I hope you find that pontoon boat. <laughs> But enjoy, you deserve it, and thank you for everything again. Hey Dave, hopefully you're gonna be doing a bunch of this stuff. Enjoy your retirement. Hey Dave, Travis here. Uh, just wanna let you know how much we're uh, really gonna miss you. I remember the first moment I talked to you, I was down south, uh, down in Vegas, uh, working down there, and uh, I talked to you over the phone, and I remember hanging up the phone and thinking, man, this guy's a really great guy. We're going to have a lot of fun together, and uh, on that note, we're just really going to miss you. Uh, enjoy your retirement. You'll be missed. Dave, thank you so much for everything. Uh, it's been an amazing couple years. You've been an incredible manager and an even better friend. I wish you all the best in retirement, and I can't wait to, wait to play some more golf with you. Dave, I just want to congratulate you on your retirement. Uh, you've paid your dues. Now it's time to go have a really good time. Uh, really enjoyed working with you over the years. You've been awesome. Uh, you got a great family, and so now go enjoy yourself. Don't worry about us. We'll be okay. Love you. Hey, Dave. <clears throat> I just wanted to say, man, this has been an awesome ride. Uh, you know, you came here, and of course, whenever we get, you know, a new guy, you know, everybody's kind of on edge and what's going to happen. And, uh, but I can honestly say, <clears throat> you've been an awesome manager. 
uh, we've had a lot of fun. You, you make the job fun, easy going, you know, don't take things so seriously um, and just have fun and, and sell RVs and, and you just made that so much easier for all of us and I think it, you know, sales and numbers, everything reflected in that and we're definitely going to miss you. Uh, 100% no doubt and uh, just hope you have a great retirement the second time around. Thanks for everything. Hey Dave, thank you so much for everything that you've done for me in the sales department in the last couple years. You will truly be missed. You've been the best boss that I've ever had. Don't tell Ty and Jody, uh, but I've just been so blessed to be able to learn from you over the last couple years and I'm excited for this next season of your life to have an absolute blast in retirement. Uh, hopefully you stay by your phone because I still want to call and pick your brain time to time. And uh, just love you, man. Thank you so much for this journey and I'm excited for this next step in your life. Go rock it. We'll talk to you soon. Dave, 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 Dave. Sorry, Jody and I couldn't be there for your last day. We really wanted to be there. We're out in the middle of nowhere, Iowa right now do a rally but uh, we're so happy you picked Beaver Coach Sales to be your last place to work you know we've been telling people for the last 10 years we want this to be the last place they work and here you are the very first one to make it your last place to work that is unless you go back to work again so if you do you better give us a call Anyway, we'll miss you, brother. We love you, and we'll see you in a couple weeks on our way home. Thanks for spending a couple years with us and helping us out. You've uh, been a great asset, and we appreciate everything. Take care.